hot tip for our next market boom. So this, this was for last week's uh, poll that was uh, listed and all the viewers, I think this was the most popular that got voted in. So it's an interesting topic. And at the moment, we're in probably one of the biggest booms that's going to be known in Australian history for the property market. The last one that happened that was a significant um, size as this was back in 2000, 2005, when the whole nation was booming once again, and it's happened again uh, 20 years down the track. So how to determine when this is going to happen? So there's a lot, a lot of things to look at. It's not just one size fits all. And so I've wrote a list of things what to look out for. And they understand, I guess, property fundamentals. Now, property is like a big jigsaw puzzle. It's not a one, one, one size fits all. It's every market's got different fundamentals. Every market's got different industries driving it. So there's markets in markets. You might have a whole region. You might have a region that might be, um, you might say it's a hotspot, but then there's certain pockets in that region which are really, really hotspots. And then there's other pockets that are really not hotspots at all. And they're markets you probably want to stay away from. So what to look out for, but to understand what's coming, there's a few things. I've put infrastructure spending in a new region. So as we're looking into Queensland, you know, your Adelaide, you're looking into, you know, your regional Victoria and New South Wales town, there is massive, massive amount of money of infrastructure projects being spent on hospital upgrades, port upgrades, airports, you know, um, building approvals. You know, you're looking at things like, you know, your schooling education systems are getting redeveloped and there's new campuses being installed, renewable energy farms and solar farms and wind farms and all these things, roads, tunnels, bridges, all sorts of things, parks, etc. So when something like that starts to happen and normally these, these projects will come because of, you know, something's happening to the region. So these infrastructure projects are starting, to, they'll influence the market. Now, it doesn't give you certainty that it's going to go up in value, but there's a lot of other things that will give you certainty and that's what's on my list here. So when you're looking at things like that, that's a, a sign that something is changing in a market and every market starts at different cycles. So this, this can be relevant for new markets coming into next year as well to help stimulate the economy and because there's a lot of people moving there. Demand versus supply. Now, that's something that is will give you certainty that you can see, okay, something's starting to change. And what I look at for demand versus supply, the total listings and seeing if that's dropping every single year, month, or going from month, sorry, to, you know, six months to a year and having a look at that data and seeing what, you know, what's the stock on market or I call it inventory level, which I like to use. So inventory levels of stock available. And if you see that stock is dropping you know, drastically over a, a period of time, that shows you that the stock is starting to run up. That's called demand, and then demand versus supply. So how do you how do you look at demand versus supply? This is a very big, big topic. So building approvals have something to do with that. The, you don't want an oversupply of building approvals or buildings getting built in a region, particularly if you're looking at investing in houses, you don't want a large amount of building approvals getting built in a region because that's going to you know, outstrip your demand because there's going to be an oversupply. So you want your building approvals to be very, very shallow and not you know, ramping up and there's going to be hundreds and hundreds or thousands of building approvals getting built in the next 12 months. You want to look at, you know, inventory levels are dropping. So your inventory is your stock. It's dropping down your days on market, which is another another metric to look at, which you can get all this data at uh, SQM. Now, you want your days on market. So how long is the property being listed for? You want your days on market to be reducing. So how long is the property being listing for till it's sold? So if you go into a market and it was 100 days, but now in, in six months or 12 months down the track, now it's 60 days. Geez, that's a sign of something starting to happen in a market. And then another thing I look at is, in, uh, sorry, is vacancy rates. I want vacancy rates to drop, show a sign as well. So all these things are working with each other, decreasing. And you start to see, you know, maybe your your vacancy rate was 1.5%. Now it's gone to 1% or 0.8%. Shows you there's demand in the rental side of things as well. So these, these are some things to look out for. Now, Government stimulus packages. So governments are printing money, putting money into the economy, giving you grants, these first home buyers grants, investor grants, and all these different type of packages to influence the market. This is something that will have an influence on the property market to help stimulate the economy. Now, APRA lending policies. Now, APRA will come in and 
they can have a, an effect on the market and they can loosen the, the policy or the, the lending criteria or they can tighten it. Back in 2017, 18, when we see Melbourne and Sydney drop, you know, 15 percent in the in the in the house values, was because they were tightening up the in, the investor lending criteria, and they were reducing the the amount of interest only loans, and so that was tightening up the investor space. They were stopping that lending, and they were, and they were making sure if you wanted to get a interest only loan up to 20 percent of a deposit, and there was a whole bunch of other things. So the property market started to suffer a little bit in Melbourne and Sydney, but doesn't mean the other those other markets are performing quite well. So, but when APRA come out and they change their lending criteria at the moment in 2020, we're in 2021, October, they've actually put a new policy in where now what they're starting to do is when they do a, a calculation on an investment property that you're looking at, they do a criteria. So they always fact check everything and they don't just go, if you're getting a, say a 2% interest rate, they're going to fact, fact check, okay, you're getting a 2% interest rate. This is your current loan. Uh, this is the current rental income that you're producing. Okay. Oh, it's getting $400 a week. You've got interest rate at 3%, let's say. Um, that, yeah, that's good. This, this person's making uh, $100,000 a year. They can service this loan. They haven't got any other outstanding debts, etc. But what they do is they put a risk mitigation on that. And they'll, they'll look at your, your home, that your home loan that you're getting, and they'll instead of going at five, uh, 3%, they might take it up to 6% and stress test it. And then they might get your your income. If you're getting $400 a week of rent, they'll take it down to, they'll, they'll reduce 80% of that. Now, they do that. Why? Just to see if something happens to the economy, can you still afford to pay for this investment property or family home? It may be as well. So APRA have a big influence on the market at the moment. They've actually increased the, the, that, uh, that, the, that servicer calculator, or that risk calculator. So they can, because it's just growing so fast at the moment, that can have a little bit of effect on the property market where it can reduce certain values of the property or certain lending criteria criteria for the, you know, for investors or family own, uh, owners. So that is something to take consideration. If they, if APRA comes out and they start loosening criteria and their policies and trying to stimulate the economy, that's something to take, be very aware of. Recessions. Now, when a recession happens, like we did when back in 2020, when, you know, COVID first came, we had a recession and we're kind of still in a recession. And we're still in debt, you know, the government's printing money. Some of this money is not, you know, stimulating the con economy because it's got, it's um, quantitative easing. It's going in, into uh, government uh, financial markets, et cetera. But when there is a recession, there's always a boom, booming phase or booming market at the back of, at the end of that. So as we're seeing, you know, 2020, there was a recession that quickly hit and it's still, we're still in that recession, but there was not as significant as it was at the beginning. And then what happened was after that recession, they need the economy to stimulate. So what the government do, they influence the market by, like I said, with grants, infrastructure spending, and there's a whole bunch of other influences in the market, interest, low interest rates, et cetera. So when this starts to happen, if you see a recession or we're in a recession, that's a time where you actually want to make sure that you want to start buying just after that and making sure you do your right to diligence and taking advantage of that. Now you can kind of see things like this to happen with the recession and, and the markets of if a downward trend is by looking at the bond market and having a look what's going on and seeing that the bond or the yielding bonds, especially the first year, uh, the one year um, bond market is decreasing as it's going. So before COVID, you know, back in 2018, the bond market was just decreasing every single year, all the way up to 2020. And that was signs that was, you know, your interest, the interest rates were still dropping from, you know, back from 2018 onwards. And so this is something to take into consideration that you could see things were starting to really get hot here. And there was, we weren't looking good at for as a financial um, perspective, but I'll move on to that. I'll move on because we, we weren't too much onto the finance side of things. Um, gross rent, uh, rent uh, improvements. So in a market, you'll start to see rents. Normally rents will start to increase before property values start to increase. So having a look at the rental market and seeing things are changing and you might see the rental market as things are starting to pick up in, um, in uh, vacancy rates start to decrease. So as the vacancy rates start to decrease, your rental income will start to increase. So you'll see you'll see markets where the rental side of things they start to improve, and you know, that's a sign. And then what will happen is eventually the capital growth side of things will start to implement. Now every market's a little bit different. Sometimes it can be the other way around as well. 
but majority of the time it can be the rental side of things improving first then with your capital growth so take keep an eye on both of them your rental improving and the capital growth will start to improve as well so vice versa depending on each market next thing rising commodity prices so what will happen is when a market is booming, as we're in today, you look at commodity prices, gold, you look at gold, silver, lumber, you look at copper, iron ore, etc. You know, all these things are increasing in value significantly. Why? Because they're stimulating the economy. They're building more houses. So that's why lumber's gone up. They're trying to, they're using iron ore for, you know, roads and all sorts of materials and metals and sorts of, all sorts of things like that. Asphalt, you know, they're using, you know, your copper, which goes into a lot of houses. Copper is is something to really look out for when you want to see economy act is actually about to boom. If you start to see, you know, copper or commodity prices of copper are starting to trend up for a certain period and they've been in a downward trend, there's a sign there of something starting to happen as well. So that's something to look out for. Now, okay, movement of people, which is super important. So even in a, in a downward trend in a market, and if say a majority of the nation is and we're in a, in a recession, where's everyone moving? So as we've seen in 2020, a lot of people were moving out of Melbourne, Sydney, a lot of people were moving um, and they're going to regional towns in you know, Victoria or New South Wales, or they're moving interstate. Why? The lifestyle changed. So people started to move and see, go to these place, go to places where they've always wanted to live, but they couldn't because of work. Now they can work from home. Uh, not just that, but a lot of people will move because of what job opportunities as well. So when the infrastructure projects have a, a massive influence on the market, what happens? People move and they'll go to these, these, these suburbs or these locations. So that's something to have a look at, internal migration, not overseas migration, internal migration. So people that have been, that are Australian citizen that are moving around and why they're moving there is because of opportunities. And I guess driving industries. So what's driving that industry? So if something comes into an industry or if there's industries that are starting to pay a uh, really start to blossom and bloom and start to boom in certain certain industries that is something that can you know influence the market so logistics i guess mining i don't like mining towns because mining towns are very dangerous but mining towns of course that's something that can you know you start to see the economy like right now port headland and all these gladstones and all of them are booming because there's a lot of things happening for mining but we look at the port district for example a port district can inf is influenced towards bringing logistics in and your export import goods are starting to improve maybe the hospitals or healthcare center centers are really starting to improve and they're building a secondary hospital and that's showing you a very high demand in in hospitals and now as well it can be you know research on you know edu um research on healthcare research that can be for you know improving you know um trying to stop cancer and, and these new facilities are being implemented or you know there's wind tunnel renewable energy farms and solar farms things like this what are driving the industries and retail retail sector construction sector there's so many things so that's something that we look at abs data to have a look at what's driving the industry and what's improving you know, if we're looking back at, at, at a four-year horizon, so if we're looking back four years and we're looking from the horizon and it's been increasing in certain industries, it shows you there's a lot of things starting to happen with certain industries and that is driving the market. And then, of course, you know, if your government policies are, are trying to improve those those markets as well by giving government spending, those industries are going to prove even more because there's more government spending supporting those industries that are going to help with the property market as well. So there's a lot of things involved. But these are some of the main things I've, I've put out there to understand the next you know, market boom to take consideration, I guess. And we're in one right now, and I think we're going to be in one for in the next five years as well moving forward. It's going to be very interesting, but in the next year or so, the way there's not going to be markets performing. There's going to be some of these markets are being propped up because the whole nation's booming, but there's nothing driving those economies. So this is something to take a, in consideration when you're looking to as an investment property in certain locations at the moment, and what's driving that economy. Super important. What is driving the economy? Just keep that in mind, and that's what we look at. We don't look at you know there's so many there's over fifteen thousand suburbs in Australia, but it's like, what are driving these suburbs? And a lot of them, nothing's really driving those suburbs. And that's where you have to make sure that you've got to get in the right location at the right time. And you've got to understand the, the due diligence and going off this, what I've put here, this is going to help with your research and understand where the next, next booming market is.